Hello! My name is Calypso, representing the Remnants of Hope gaming community inside the Elder Scrolls Online division of the guild, and today we're in week one of the public testing cycle for the upcoming chapter expansion, Blackwood. With Blackwood comes a new trial, Rock Grove, and in today's video, myself and a ragtag group of masochists have delved into the PTS and engaged with the first boss of the trial, Oxaltso. I want to point out that this video is only going to be a mechanics showcase for the normal mode encounter, not an explanation of strategy. At the time of this recording, we haven't quite nailed down the best way to approach the fight, though that's most likely due to the fact that we were short-handed as a result of scheduling, so we went in with a handicap. Nonetheless, I believe we saw about 90% of what the boss has to offer, and so I'm comfortable with putting out this video detailing exactly what you'll encounter on your own attempts. If anything changes, I'll be sure to update you. There are two different types of adds that'll appear during the fight with Oaks Deathhoppers so, Death Hoppers and the Havokrell Annihilator. First, let's talk about what Oaks so himself will do. Like any boss, Oaks so has light and heavy attacks, which are Feral Claw and Ravenous Chomp, respectively. These attacks do not have cleave, as you can see me testing here on my healer. Possessing a bit more flash is Molten Earth, which is a series of three gigantic stomps the boss performs, each producing outwardly traveling lines of fire on the ground in a star pattern. He does this often, roughly every 25 to 30 seconds. This ability has a range of about 20 meters from wherever the boss casts it, so best practiced is to pay attention and sidestep each ray of fire as a hit from one of these averages about 4.6 to 5k worth of damage. In keeping consistent with being an Argonian behemoth, Oxaltso will periodically turn red and target a player with Savage Blitz. The targeted player will receive an identifying target beneath their feet, as well as a red spotlight for the rest of the group, indicating they have three seconds before Oxaltso charges at them. The targeted player will want to dodge this, as the hit can be brutal. Blistering Smash is a large overhead slam Oxaltso will perform on his and the main tank's location, producing a harmful AoE with an 8 meter radius on the ground, which will persist for 10 seconds. And finally, we have Noxious Sludge. Oxaltso will lift his head and fire off a mortar of poison at two random members of the group. The afflicted members will suffer from a ramping dot and drop noxious puddles every 4 seconds until the poison is cleansed. The puddles will persist for 10 seconds. To cleanse yourself of Noxious Sludge, you'll want to run into one of the four healing springs which are positioned in each corner of the room. Each spring can only cleanse one player at a time with a 25 second cooldown before the spring can be used again. Once used, the spring will turn to poison, and after a few seconds, three death hoppers will emerge who need to be DPS down. And this brings us to our first type of ad seen during the fight. The death hoppers are a DPS priority, as a single death hopper can pepper the raid with fetid spit which he lobs out like a mortar every few seconds. If Death Hoppers aren't kept under control each time Noxious Sludge is cleansed, then the fight will very, very quickly get out of hand. Adding to the chaos is the Havokrell Annihilator, who shows up at various percentages of Oxaltso's HP. At 95%, 75%, and presumably 55% and 35%, Oxaltso will cast Meteor Crash, which will cause him to lob three fireballs at a random player before summoning a final, larger meteor, which takes the form of the Annihilator appearing onto the battlefield. Shortly after entering the battle, the Annihilator will cast Blazing Boon on himself. This takes the form of an AoE around his person, with an 8 meter radius. This is, from what I could tell, a rough 30% damage buff, not only to the Annihilator, but to Oxaltso as well, which means stacking the two bosses isn't recommended. The Annihilator's most dangerous attack to the tank with Taunt is Sunhammer. His sword will glow with fire, and 2.5 seconds later, he'll strike with a powerful overhand, resulting in massive damage if not blocked or dodged. This ability is a precursor to Sunburst, which takes the form of three meteors that fall from the sky upon three random party members' last known locations. Party members who are at least 12 meters away from wherever the Annihilator is will find themselves at risk of having Ember Chains cast on them and being dragged back into the fight. This prompts the Annihilator to immediately follow up with Cinder Cleave on the dragged player. Cinder Cleave is a frontal cone, which will follow the targeted player wherever they go until it is cast, so the target needs to stay put lest they expose the raid to damage. 
Cinder Cleave can be dodged if the target waits for the right moment. If the dodge is missed, then the targeted player, and anyone else inside the cone, is afflicted with Ashen Wounds for 22 seconds. Ashen Wounds is a dot, which cannot be purged nor can it be removed by overhealing. It's a heal check through and through and will tick damage every second for upwards of 7,000 health. If the fight is kept in close range to the Annihilator, then he will never cast Ember Chains and thus never cast Cinder Cleave either. It's important to note that the Annihilator can chain more than one person at a time. He decides at random who of those people gets Cinder Cleave. And that's it! Hopefully this video provided you with an in-depth understanding of the mechanics you'll encounter in your fight against Oxaltso. Any changes or discoveries made will be highlighted in a future video, but at the moment the only thing to wait for now is the proper strategy, which you can probably already see taking shape based on what you know now. I'm Calypso, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.